Hey everybody, this is Alex with Altera Arms. I'm the stock betting specialist here. I do all of the inletting and betting of your stocks when you order one of our rifles. Here to talk to you today about Artica component stocks. Now we send these out pre-inlet, all painted up, ready to go, ready for you to send to a professional for betting. We do typically recommend that you take this to a professional gunsmith to have it bedded properly, but I know a lot of you are handy and would like to do things yourself, so we're here to help you out a little bit, just get, walk you through the process some. So when you get your stock, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to have all the accessories installed. It's going to be inletted. You're going to see some white sections, and that's the sections that we're going to be bedding. And before we start, we want to make sure that we have everything that we need together. So we've got our component stock that we've shipped to you. Beautiful thing, all lovely Damascus painted. We've got our Tika Action from your Tika rifle. We have whatever bottom metal you choose to use. This is a standard OEM Tika DBM. We have our magazine, which we only need here for fitment. We want to make sure that everything fits together really nice before we actually bed everything, because once it's bedded, there's no changing that. We have our mountain tactical recoil lug that will have to be mounted into your stock. We have our pillars that we will use for bedding your rifle. This is the front and this is the rear. One's shorter, one's longer. Rear is long, front is short. I have already pre-cut these for the sake of the video, but you will have to adjust as necessary to fit yours. And then we have all of our tools of the trade. Gloves, Q-tips, safety glasses are going to be very important when you start disassembling your stock in your action. We got our release compound and we have our bedding compound. So our bedding compound that we like to use is DevCon 10110. That's something we've had a lot of luck with. We, it works really well for us. But you can use whatever bedding compound you see fit or one that you like. You know, there's a lot of good ones out there. Just make sure you follow the instructions very carefully. And the, the release compound that you use is very, very important. If you do not get release compound on your, on your action properly before you bed it into the stock, you may be permanently affixed and never be able to remove it. So keep that in mind. Uh, first thing we're going to have to do before we do anything else is check our fitment. So the way I like to do that, I have my handy dandy vise here. So we're going to mount the barreled action into the vise, like so, so that it's sitting with the bottom upward. We'll remove the action screws and get those out of the way for a second. And then we'll need to set our recoil lug into the recoil lug recess there in the action. We'll place our bottom metal into the stock and drop our pillars into place. Now these pillars I pre-cut at 905 thousandths of an inch for the front and 1,270 thousandths for the front, which is 1.270 for those of you who don't speak machinist. And we're going to place this onto the action with the recoil lug and make sure everything sits on there real tight. We'll put our action screws in, take our wrench that fits our screws. This is a T25. Your action screws may actually be a different screw head. We'll just cinch those down nice and tight. Those pillars will support your bottom metal as you screw up to the action, which is the purpose of them being bedded into your stock in the first place. So now we'll take it out of the vise and kind of look down the barrel channel. This one, I've already put masking tape on the barrel. This is something that we need to do before we bed the top of the action. We'll explain that further later in our video. We want to make sure that our barrel channel looks nice and even. We want to make sure that the back of the action has a nice, smooth transition to the stock, which this one has a very nice transition. We want to make sure that we have proper clearance on this side for our bolt release. This one's a little little tight, but it's got great clearance. It's not going to impede it on it in any way. And we want to make sure that our bolt will work back and forth and that our action screws, we remove the bolt, are not sticking up too high so that they impede the bolt. If you cut your pillars too short, your action screws could be impeding your bolt. And we want to make sure we don't do that for certain. So this one has got very nice fitment. Everything comes together just beautifully. So when we get ready to bed that, it's going to just, it's going to work fantastic. 
And my safety decided to come back on, so we'll put that on. All right. So now we can take that all back apart because we're going to have to disassemble the action and the bottom metal. And when I did that, that recoil lug is sitting in the stock. We'll make sure we remove that before this next step. Okay, so one thing that we do here at Altera, and we recommend you do when you bed your rifle, is we dimple all the areas that we're going to bed. We take a, we use a Dremel tool and put little dimples in all around the area that you'll be bedding. What this does is gives more surface area and creates a mechanical bond between the bedding compound and your stock. That way, nothing's going to move, nothing's going to come apart, nothing's going to slip. So that's going to be our next step. We're going to have to walk away from the camera here for a second and go to the workbench. So we're going to clamp this in the vise. Got our little round-headed bit to do our dimples. Turn this thing off. So as you guys can see, we've got a lot of little dimples there for our bedding compound to form into. Makes it a nice solid bond. We use a Dremel. You can use a drill with a small bit. Just be very careful not to hit any of the carbon as you're doing so. You want to make sure that you're only touching the white core of the, the stock. Let's go back over the camera. So before we start bedding anything, we're going to have to remove all the pieces and parts of a rifle that we do not want in while we're bedding. There are certain things like our magazine release here that if we bed that with that in there, it's probably going to gum up with compound to be permanently affixed, and we're going to have a mess to deal with. Same thing with the bolt. Got to remove that. Our trigger, which is very simple to remove, it's just one screw right here. You undo that, and it pops right off. There's a spring underneath the, the trigger bolt that will come off and be, be lost if you're not careful. So make sure you keep that with that as you take it apart. Maybe try to keep everything in a little baggie to keep your parts all separated. Next thing we're gonna have to do on the top of the action is remove this bolt release. Now this pin here feels pretty tight if you're just trying to pull it with your hand, but it's only held in by spring pressure on the bolt release. So you can put a little bit of pressure on that and just Pull that pin right out. Now you don't want to let go of that bolt release yet because it is under spring tension and it will just kind of go wherever it wants to when you lose that spring. So we have the bolt release, we have the spring, we'll set those aside with the pin. That way we don't lose them. And I'll put those in a baggie just to keep them all separated from everything else. So that is everything removed from the top of the action that we need. So that's ready for bedding when we get to that step. Set him aside. Now, your bottom metal, very much the same thing. Just one, one little pin here that holds your magazine release in. And we'll just go ahead and hold that magazine release in just a little bit and push that pin out the other side. Oop, and I let go of the spring and the, bolt re and the magazine release. Luckily, they fall, all fell on my table. So now this is all clean of any parts that are going to get jammed up. It's basically ready to bed. All we have to do is spread our release agent on it. So before we spread any release agent, we're going to take our pillars that are already cut to size. If you haven't figured out your fitment, that's this is time to make sure you have that right. Have them cut to size. We're going to drop them just in some acetone here to degrease them and make sure they're nice and clean for our bedding compound to bond to. We'll set that aside. Okay, the stock is ready to go. The bottom metal is what we need next. So what we're going to do is take our release agent. We use this S.C. E. Johnson paste wax, which is not actually available commercially anymore. <laughs> but a lot of people will use shoe polish or brown L's acrylic glass release agent. But this is what we use here. It smells delicious. <laughs> and you're just going to apply that fairly liberally. I mean, you don't need a lot. It just has to cover it. 
but it's better to make sure you have coverage everywhere. Get in those pinholes. Make sure they have release agent in them. Make sure everything's covered real nice with the wax. Because anything that is not covered in wax will be bonded by the DevCon that we use. And a lot of this area won't even touch the bedding compound, but I would far rather have wax on an area that doesn't touch the bedding compound than to not have it somewhere and then regret it later. All right, nice coat of wax on everything. Shouldn't have any chance for any of that DevCon to bond to the bottom metal. We'll set that just right here. Put our lid back on this. And our pillars should be nice and degreased at this point. We'll set those aside to let the acetone flash off. And now we're going to mix up our bedding compound. So follow the instructions on whichever bedding compound that you choose to use. I have my own methods here with our little scale and our bedding compound that we use. We have all of our ratios figured out on this. So for pillar bedding, I use 10 grams of the DevCon putty to 1.11 grams of the hardener. So I'm going to just scoop out 10 grams worth of this with my broken popsicle stick. Use a high quality popsicle stick, people. Oh, that's a huge, that's a tongue depressor. Oh. And I've actually got it, so I can throw this away. A little more. Okay, one point. Set that aside. We don't need that for this rest of the step. So now we're going to mix up our compound. Make sure we get all of our hardener scraped up here and mixed in with our compound. So I mix this DevCon until it's a nice gray pudding texture. If it looks like something you might want to put it in your mouth if it was a different color, then you're probably about right there. We'll set that there for just a second. We'll put our stock over here in the vise. Unwind it forever in a day. So we'll clamp that in there. And we'll take our bedding compound and just kind of smear it up around the top edge or the bottom edge of those holes. Just doesn't have to be real thick, just enough of a layer that it, there's something between the bottom metal and the stock. And you want to make sure you get down in the holes really well too. We're going to just line all the, all the white, all of these holes with this bedding compound. Make sure we have good coverage. We don't want any voids, any missed spots. We want that bedding job to be just as solid as we can possibly get it. The rear holes are a little longer, so sometimes it takes a little extra effort to make sure you get good coverage in there. Okay. So... You'll notice I'm being a little sloppy here. And our experience with this DevCon compound, we can get a little on the edges and it wipes off really nicely before it cures. Depending on which compound you use, you may want to be a little more careful, maybe mask off the edges before you start spreading compound. That way you can wipe it off easier off of the masking and don't have to worry about it sticking to your stock permanently. So now we're gonna go to the pillars. And I just hate cleaning DevCon off my hands, so I wear a glove when I do this. Michael Jackson style. And just coat the pillars fairly liberally with the compound. A lot of it will squish out when you put them in the stock. But again, no voids, no air holes, no pockets. We want solid bedding compound to stock to action contact. And I'll just slide that down in the hole. And you'll see it squeeze out. Go to the front pillar. A little smaller, doesn't require quite as much compound to cover it. And 
pretty good job of using all of our compound on this one and not wasting any. Okay, slip that in the hole. It might be a little snug, especially that front end seems like it's a little snugger sometimes, but especially if you put a glove in it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now our pillows are in their holes. You can see they're a little sloppy on top. That's all right. Did you leave them proud? I've left them a little proud so that when I press the bottom metal in, it is pressing the pillars down into the holes with the compound, and everything is just absolutely fit together as perfectly as can be. So we have our bottom metal covered in release agent. Don't want anything uncovered. And we're going to, I like to start at the front set it in and just press my way back until it's all set in there fully. I'll wipe my hands on the towel here. And now you'll see why we have all these Q-tips. So those are one of the best ways to just wipe that off real nice and clean. So I'm wiping the excess bedding compound off of the stock and off of the edge of the bottom metal. Make sure that we don't have anything that's going to leave any residue on the top where we don't want it. Just kind of clean around the edges here. Scrub it really nice with the Q-tips. There's Most of it should come off real nicely. You can see here that my bedding compound has actually pushed its way into the action screw hole. So rather than wipe that around, I'm going to try to push that down through the hole as much as I can and just catch my Q-tip on the bottom side. So. In the next step, we will drill out any excess that gets in those holes. So it's not hugely critical that we clean it all out, but we do want to make sure we don't have any contacting the bottom metal. Because we want that bottom metal to be completely free of any DevCon. And my vice is in the way on that one. Okay. So we'll just make sure we have it real nice and clean on this side. And we are satisfied with that. We'll go ahead and turn the stock over in the vise. And you can see on this top side that a lot of the, the bedding compound pushed up with the pillars and is now hanging out the top edge. So I like to hold the bottom metal in real nice and tight because if you push on that, that pillar, sometimes you'll push it out. And you want to make sure that everything stays in place as is. So we'll just wipe that off the top of the pillars. And some of you with sharper eyes might notice the marks on the top of this pillar because it's already been set in the action before. And when you torque everything down, it actually sets into the pillar. And we'll just kind of wipe up our excess here. We'll put more bedding compound on this in our next step once this sets. But for now, we want to clean up the excess. So as you can see, while I'm cleaning this up, these pillars are about 30 thousandths of an inch proud of the white core of the stock. Why that is, is so that you have room for the, the bedding compound when we do the top edge to actually fill in around those pillars. We want full contact from the action to the bottom metal when this is all said and done. If we've mounted those pillars just exactly the same height as the bottom, the DevCon would not allow there to be any metal to metal contact on the pillars and the action. So we've got that part all cleaned up. What we're gonna do now is set this aside and just let this compound cure for the next 16 hours. So it needs to sit overnight. When we come back th tomorrow, we'll start on the next part. We're back with the uh, part two of our video here where we've let our stock cure overnight let the bedding cure so the pillars are set in there good and solid so today we're going to go ahead and take those take the bottom metal out and then re-bed everything with the top of the action in here so to start with that all we have to do is pull this out and if we did a good job of waxing it it should just pop right out it shouldn't give us too much trouble pop. and then you'll see there's a little bit of devcon around the edges of that hole so I've got a, a hand drill here. I've, I use a 1964 spit, but that's more of something for our CNC mill. You can use a 516 if that's more comfortable for you. You don't have a 1964 in your kit. 
So we're just going to take and run the drill from the top side down through that hole pretty carefully. Clean out all that excess that got down in those pillar holes while we were bedding. Okay. All right, we're actually just about ready to roll here, but we want to make sure we have everything that we need first. So we've got our, our barreled action here. And for the sake of the video, I've already put masking tape on this. The masking tape will keep your barrel channel aligned when you are doing your bedding. So when we get this all in here and get the bedding compound in here, there's going to be a little bit of play. And we want that masking tape towards the fore end of the barrel to keep it from wobbling back and forth too much. Now I've already got this set. It looks a little, little tight right here, but once we have the recoil lug and everything in here, it'll actually be held down a little bit and won't touch that masking tape. So when you do fit that, put your recoil lug in your stock just temporarily like that and fit that to your action. So now we've got a good solid setting there. And you can see there's just a little bit of play in that front end if you look really close while I'm doing this. And so that is how we know we've got the right amount of clearance there. So now that's ready to go. What I have here next to the barreled action, I have two M6 thread studs that fits the Tika actions, two 10 millimeter nuts threaded M6. And these pillars are just a spacer that I use when I torque down the studs into the action. This one's been heavily modified so that it clears the trigger guard on the back side. We've got our recoil lug, which is still in here. What if someone doesn't have those pillars to use like that? If you don't have these pillars to use, you can just thread a nut onto the, onto the stud all the way down to the bottom metal. But you might want to put a washer in between so you don't damage your bottom metal with the sharp edges of that nut. You'll probably want a shorter stud that I'm using. These ones that I've got here are about two and three quarter, three inches long. If you're not using something like this where it's about an inch, inch and a quarter, you might want to cut that down to make two inches or under so that your socket will reach to your nut. We've got a little super glue. This is just to aid in placing the recoil lug in the stock before we bed it. We've got a torque wrench because when we tighten down those studs, we want to make sure that we're torquing them to the proper spec so that everything goes together right. Got a 10 millimeter socket to attach to our torque wrench. My little flashlight here that I've added to the kit is just simply for inspecting after we're done wiping the bedding material off. Make sure we didn't miss any little spots that might have dripped onto the stock. We still have our bedding compound that we saw in the first part of the video and our Johnson wax and our little scale and our Q-tips. So I should have everything here that I need for this video and we can start get started. We'll go ahead and set up our stock in the vise here, get it ready to go. It doesn't have to do anything else at this point other than just sit here for us nice and pretty. Remember what I said about clamping the vise down too tight. We don't want to crack this stock by clamping that down too hard. And we're going to have to wax all of our pieces here other than the recoil lug. It will get a little bit of wax on it, but we're going to have to wax the action. We're going to re-wax the bottom metal. Even though we waxed it once, we want to make sure it's still got a good coat of wax on it. And we're going to wax our studs. So all these pieces here that, you, that I'm touching will be waxed. So when we do these studs, we just want to make sure those threads are good and covered in wax to make sure that it doesn't seize up in the DEVCON because it will squeeze down into the pillar holes when we bed that top side. So before we do the, the actual action of the rifle, we really want to cover up this little hole here where the bolt release pin goes because otherwise we will get DEVCON pushed up into this hole or bedding compound and it'll get up into this area and it will mechanically lock this into the action. So I've got a little piece of pipe tape here. It doesn't have to be pipe tape. You can use just about any tape that will take the stress of having something stuck to it and pulled apart. I'm just going to cut one little corner off of it. I'm going to put it in that little pocket there. And that doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to 
be doing a little little bit of cleanup in that pocket afterwards. We just don't want anything overhanging the edges on this side. As long as it's all down in the hole, that's absolutely fine. And we'll we'll take the remaining piece of that little pipe tape. We're gonna use it to cover the bolt release hole here, and that's pretty close to the action on the bottom or to the stock on the bottom side. So we're gonna have to be real close to the edge of it when we put that tape there, just right there. And that tape's not entirely necessary there with that hole there, but I like to cover it just to keep things nice and clean. So now that we've covered up those two holes, these will pretty well be out of the way. I go ahead and wax them anyways in case we get a little spill over, because depending on how much bedding compound you use, it can get there. But I'm not as worried about stuff getting into those holes. As we're waxing this, the bottom side of this action, we want to make sure we're getting all these little grooves and notches and holes. Just make sure that everything is well covered, especially on the bottom side. Let's go up and down the sides of the action. You shouldn't have to go higher than the flat on the side of the action. We'll get on the top side back here where we can get a little spill over. We really, really want to avoid anything sticking in those two action screw holes. And we'll go ahead and wax just a little bit up the barrel too from the shank forward. I'm going to wipe off just a little dab of that wax in the middle just so that we can put a little drop of super glue there. The super glue will keep the recoil lug there just long enough that we can get it bedded in the action. Take our little bottle of super glue here. We'll just put just a dab, not much at all. Because we want that to break free when we pull the action out of the out of the stock. We've got our mountain tactical recoil lug. Put that in there. And we're going to kind of line that up as best we can before that super glue sets and just kind of hold it in place. There we go. Super glue is about set. All right. So we waxed all of our pieces. We have our stock here ready to go. Next step is to mix up our bedding compound and start smearing it in there. So I have got 36 grams of putty and four grams of hardener. Just that's the good ratio for our DevCon that we use here. Okay, so we've got our bedding compound all mixed up. Nice consistency here. I've got our stock set in the vise here just so I don't have to hold on to it. So we're just going to put a nice coating all along that white area to be bedded. And we'll get a little on the tops of the pillars and stuff, but don't worry about that. We'll clean that up here in a little bit. And I can sometimes afford to be a little sloppier than you might at home because I have a CNC mill to clean up my mistakes. But you might want to just try not to get too much hanging over the edges. A lot of it will squish out, but just try to keep it somewhat neat as you go go about wiping your bedding compound in. And I like to leave the recoil lug area for last and just kind of fill that in with whatever I have left. It's the most important area, but I want to make sure that I just can glob it in there. Make sure you cover all that white because we want that to be a perfect solid bed job all the way around your action. Get a little on the back side of the tang here. Okay, now we're going to glob that down into the recoil lug recess. And we're going to really want to make sure that we get all the air bubbles out of that pocket because we don't want any voids around the recoil lug. So we'll really jam that bedding compound down into there. Not worried about having to clean it up off the sides later as long as we have enough in there to really bed that recoil lug properly. So, yeah, don't don't rush this too much. I mean, this particular bedding compound cures over 16 hours. I can usually let it sit for an hour before it even starts getting hard on me. So take your time. Make sure everything's covered really well. I'm not doing this because I'm in a rush. I'm just used to doing it every day. All right. So before we make, make the action to the stock, we need to clean off the tops and the insides of those pillars a little bit. Grab a little handful of Q-tips here, and I'm just going to take and wipe right around the tops of that pillar until it's 
fairly clean. You don't have to be able to eat off of it, but you want as much metal on metal contact as you can get out of it. Reach down and wipe out the inside. We'll just pull our stock out of the vise, set that aside for a moment. We're going to take our studs that we waxed earlier and thread them into the action holes. And they'll actually thread all the way through, so as long as you have full thread engagement, you don't really need to go any farther. Just make sure you have good engagement. Okay, we'll take that, we'll clamp that up in the vise. And we'll put our bottom metal back in our stock. There we go. Now we're going to take our stock and turn it upside down and place it over the action studs here. So I like to get down where I can really see what's going on here. And just gently feed them through the holes so as not to get any bedding compound on the studs and right down onto that recoil lug. Okay, so that's on there. Got a little bit on there when I was cleaning up. Um, mine was good and attached there, but make sure before you put your stock over your action that your recoil lug is still attached and centered nicely. We don't want that moving around and getting stuck in a weird spot. Okay, so now we'll take our spacers here, and you can use whatever you want for that spacer, like I said. Uh oh So we have our studs in place, we have our spacers on here. We're just going to thread those 10 millimeter M6 nuts onto the studs. And we're going to take our torque wrench with our 10 millimeter socket. And we're going to just torque that down in steps. We're going to go down, I'm going to go 15 inch pounds both front and back. Then we're going to go up 30 inch pounds. Set that aside. Now at this point, we don't really want to handle the stock. We want that to set as it is after we torqued on those nuts. So all of our handling from this point is going to be by the barreled action. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the end of the barrel here. We're just going to turn it over in our vise. Now the reason we don't want to handle this stock is because any movement in that bedding compound at this point could cause air bubbles or voids to show up. So we've got it all turned over. You can see there's bedding compounds squishing out all along the edges here. And on the back side even worse. But we're going to go ahead and just take our Q-tips and just wipe that off of there. Being careful not to force it into anywhere we're not supposed to. Get down to this relief cut. Make sure our serial number is all nice and cleaned out. We'll just go all the way around, just wiping that bedding compound off. See a little bit there got smeared. In any spots you see like this where you might have a little bit more of a, a gap between the action and the stock, there's bedding compound underneath of that. But a good thing to do is just kind of fill that in just to make it nice and pretty. It's already nicely bedded, but it's going to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing. Make sure you get really well down in the, the safety relief. Because if you don't, your safety and your trigger are not going to even go in there and function. As you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're pushing away from the action as you're wiping your stuff. All right, so once we've pretty well wiped everything off that we can see, I like to keep a little flashlight on hand and just kind of go over everything with a fine tooth comb and find the little spots that you may have missed with the naked eye. Just make sure you clean up as nicely as possible. It'll make cleanup after bedding much easier.
All right, seem to be nice and clean. So if you're just at home in your own workshop, you can leave it sitting in the vise overnight, just like this, let it hang. Here we have a, a system where we hang them and let them dry overnight. So what I like to do is put finger in the action, loosen my vise just enough that I can get the barrel out and just pick it up just like that and move it over to our bedding station. And we'll just leave that there for the next 16 hours to cure. All right, we're back for the last part of our video. We've got our stock here all bedded up. It's been sitting long enough to cure. So we're ready to crack this open and see how it turned out. Go ahead and put it in the vise here. Got our 10 millimeter wrenches to undo our nuts. <laughs> Somebody get him off a set. <laughs> And we're gonna just thread our nuts back. Actually, this one will just come out. We don't even need to jam that one up. So these will usually be stuck in just a little bit. So you wanna thread your nuts back on. And just thread, thread it down far enough that you can get the same thread engagement with both nuts. <laughs> we're gonna have to redo this part. Okay, so we got to thread our nuts on here. We'll put one down far enough that you can get the other nut engaged just as far into the threads, get equal pushing on them. And we'll just jam those together with our two wrenches. And then grab a hold of the lower nut and spin that stud out. All right, we got that out of the way. Let's go ahead and see if we can crack this off of here. Oh, it came off beautifully. So it looks a little messy in here right now, but we're going to clean some of this up here in a little bit. Let's go ahead and remove our bottom metal too. Get that out of the way. So that's what it's going to look like when this thing comes out of bedding. And the first thing we're going to want to do is clean our action screw holes out. I'm going to go over here to the trash can for this. All right, so we've got our action screw holes cleaned back out so that our, our studs or our action screws will flip it through there real freely. So at this point, your stock is bedded, but we have to clean out the inside so that all of the pieces and parts in your magazine will fit through. So we're gonna go over to the workbench here and do some Dremel smithing. So a few areas we really need to pay attention to is all around the inside here. Make sure you clean out the, the safety relief here really well. And up here, and then we go to the bottom side. We need to make sure that we have this out of the way for the trigger assembly. And this up here has actually come out pretty clean. We could probably leave that, but we're gonna go ahead and clean it up a little more to make sure we have good clearance for our magazine release. This will take a lot of Dremel smithing to get this out of here. We'll show you in a little bit how we do it. Another spot to pay close attention to is where your bolt release has that recess in your action. It leaves this little nub right here. We need to remove that completely to make room for the bolt release pin. So we're just gonna grind that out of there. Another thing in that area is that pin actually hangs down lower than the action. So we're gonna have to just put a little relief notch right there. So that pin has somewhere to go. Doesn't have to be perfect. So now I've shown you a little bit of the basics here. We're gonna throw this in the mill and show you guys how we do it.
So we've taken our stock out of the mill. You can see it's cleaned up all along the edges of the action inlet here, but it also took off a little bit of our black in the inside. So we're going to go ahead and re-black those pieces. Just make them look nice and professional. You can do this at home with yours if you happen to get a little too excited with your Dremel, but it's all cosmetic on the inside. If you, if you care about seeing it, take care of it. If you don't, you can just leave it however you like. This is kind of how your rifle stock should look after you're done with the Dremel. Just nice clean edges. You're probably not going to get it this clean with the Dremel. Of course, the CNC mill is much more accurate. You can see at the back end here, we ended up with a little bit of an air bubble at the back that I didn't catch when we bedded it. That is purely cosmetic. It won't affect the way the, the action is bedded at all. It still has good support all around the action screws front and back. The recoil lug is one of the most important sections, and that's got good fill in there, no voids. It's all very solid. So when we put our action in here, it's going to be just rock solid. So one thing you, you will want to make sure you do after you clean up the inside edges is just sand these edges a little bit with some fine sandpaper, 400, 220 grit will work. Just try not to get up on the edges and scratch your paint. Just kind of take any sharp edges off, run your finger along it. Everything feels good. You're ready to go. You're ready to put your rifle back together. All right, so we've got our rifle stock. It's all bedded, it's beautiful. The action fits neatly in. There we go. Yeah, snap in there. Wow. So when we pull it out. It should be a little bit of friction pulling it out. So at this point, the stock is done. We've got it all bedded. What we're going to need to do next is make sure we get all the wax off of your bottom metal and off of your action. And when we use our, our Johnson wax, we use this wax and grease remover to clean all that off and then give it a good wipe down with rubbing alcohol when we're done. You might have little bits of bedding compounds still stuck on here. Even though it was wax, it's just kind of sticking on the surface. So, I mean, fingernail, a little bit of a scrub with a popsicle stick, something soft and wooden or plastic. Don't use a metal tool to scrape that off. Otherwise, you could scratch the finish on your action. And once you have those all cleaned up, you're ready to assemble it all back together. And if you've made it this far, I'm sure that you have the confidence needed to reverse the process of disassembly. At this point, we're really hoping that this video has taught you everything you need to know and given you the confidence to bed your own rifle. If you have any questions, there's lots of good resources out there on the Internet. Maybe consult those if you haven't explained something thoroughly for you. And if not, well, go back and watch the video again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and if you need any clarification on any of these steps, feel free to call Altera Arms and ask us any questions that you have. We'll try to answer them as best as we can. So, good luck.